ESPN, a college hoop triple header, leading off the defending national champions. Covey Smith and his fifth-ranked Wildcats are soaring this season and have a fourth consecutive Final Four in their sights. Tonight, they take on freshman Ted Dupe and the rest of the young Gators. Then, at 9.30, wait, don't do it! On a four-game losing streak, Louisville looks to stop its free fall. The cards, Denny Crum and Marcus Mabin are getting up to host conference foe Memphis and Jermaine Housley. And to close things out, who better to play at midnight than the Idaho Vandals? Check out their high-flying act, taking on the Iona Gales. So get your hoop fix with a triple header starting right now. With its proud history, long championship tradition, Kentucky is used to getting everybody's best shot. They will get that tonight in the O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida. The Florida Gators are ready. They are thinking revenge, and their crowd is pumped up. The Gators have not lost at home this year. Chris Fowler and Brad Doherty, welcome to the start of our triple header. But Kentucky, Brad, brings in, I think, the most impressive streak in college basketball right now. They have won 15 consecutive conference road games. Amazing in a conference as deep as the SEC. Yeah, the SEC is a very tough conference. That's incredible to be out of the, the home confines, the familiarity that you have at home. You hear about teams all the time talking about a great winning streak at home, this, that, and another. To win 15 SEC road games is incredible. And this is a very good Kentucky basketball team. Florida gets another crack. They look like the young team that they are when they went to Rupp and lost by 35 points. They would like to get redemption tonight. They believe they can take down the Wildcats. We'll come up for the tip-off when you come back. Brad Nestler and Dick Vitale will call the game. Mike Miller and his fellow freshmen for Florida try to pull off the upset against the defending national champions next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's O'Connell Center is full of electricity. It's full of fans expecting a record crowd in Gainesville. Fifth-ranked Kentucky, the defending national champions against the Gators. Kentucky looking for its 20th win and looking to put more space between themselves and Florida and Tennessee in the Eastern Division side of the Southeastern Conference standing. And welcome to the O-Dome, folks. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. Just the starting lineups gave me goosebumps. They're ready for it here. But remember back on January 2nd, a 35-point spanking that Kentucky put on Florida. They got to they gotta stay with them early tonight, Dick. I really believe that, Brad. I think they got to keep this crowd so alive. It's one of the most electrical atmospheres I've been at. Yesterday was sensational at Duke. This crowd is ready to duplicate that. So I think, number one, they got to get a great start to keep the crowd in the game. They can't allow Kentucky. Kentucky to jump out early and get the early lead. They are a great shooting team. They're the top scoring team in the conference. But Tubby Smith's got the number two defense in the SEC. And he's got a six and one record against Florida, including two and one against Kentucky, uh, against the Gators. The DiGiorno starting lineup looks like this. Bradley Padgett, Evans, Wayne Turner at the point, and Desmond Allison, the only Floridian on the Kentucky roster making a homecoming of sorts and in his fourth start as a freshman for Florida it looks like this Shannon and Weeks in the backcourt Miller and right up front and Udonis Haslam is playing as well as any low post freshman in the nation seventh in the NCAA in field goal percentage for Billy Donovan who has really turned this program on he's taken that Steve Spurrier approach put it on a basketball floor and though he's only one and six against Kentucky one and four while the head coach at Florida he has got this place rocking and they expect 12,400 or more. You can't get a ticket to this game. Curtis Shaw, Gerald Boudreaux, John Clockerty, our officials. John's got the ball in hand. We're just about set for the 15 and 4 Gators and the 19 and 4 Wildcats. I really like the new Kentucky lineup with Allison. He's very athletic. He's played exceptionally well in his four starts. The one great thing I admire about the Kentuckys and the Dukes and the Carolinas, they take everybody's best hit, and they always come to play. And it's Florida first offensively. Kentucky in the man-to-man. -man. 
Wright trying to pack it in low to Haslam. Around Brett. What a player he has become on the interior. Haslam so effective, as you said earlier, Brad. I think he'll be freshman of the year in the conference. We saw him play basket for basket and rebound for rebound against Elton Brand when they lost up at Cameron Indoor to Duke. They've come out with a different philosophy, Florida, than they did in the first matchup. They're not zoning. They're coming out pressing and playing man-to-man. Magic doubled down low. Hashimu Evans wide open. Got it. He has really taken his game up again. Went through that slump after the brilliant performance you and I had against Maryland when he had 31. He bounced back in that big win over Auburn, who, by the way, is legitimate big time. I see him Tuesday, and I'm looking forward to it down at Auburn. What a rebounding team. Inside again. Haslam this time. Jump ball. Nice defense by Bradley. We'll go over to Kentucky. Kentucky does such a solid job in their team defense. As you said earlier, teams are only shooting 37%. There's Haslam, the diaper dandy, trying to seal off on the inside. Does a great job to convert. Here's a full court pressure. Wayne Turner got by Shannon, left it for Evans, and a foul underneath. When you talk about pressure defense, right now, that should really play to the liking of Wayne Turner. His first, Bobby first Smith team in his second season and of course was on the same staff as Billy Donovan under Rick Pitino at Kentucky. What a staff they had. Herb Sendick was on that staff as well. Here's Bradley. He's been hot lately from the field. Nice move inside. He's still hot from the field. He's like fifth in the nation in field goal percentage. So effective. Has excellent shot selection. He had a big game in the first matchup. He and Padgett dominated Florida. Whistle down low. And charging foul as Bradley holds his ground. We talked about the winning streak. Chris Fowler did with Brad Doherty. 15 games on the road. And that's tied for third longest. If they win tonight, it'll be the longest road winning streak in the SEC since 1950 through 55. 24 in a row. Also Kentucky, right. That was Hagen and Ramsey yep. and that great gang. You were too young. <laughs> young to remember that. Look at the full court pressure. Eddie Shannon applying a lot of pressure. Pressure got to him. Kicked out of bounds, though, by Miller, says Curtis Shaw. Eddie Shannon, a great story. Young man playing with one eye. Curry Kirkpatrick did a major feature on him on ESPN. Very courageous kid. He's an inspiration, that's for sure. And really, this Florida team became more solidified when he became the starting point guard. No disrespect to Teddy DuPay, the sensational freshman, but he's better coming off the bench right now. Turner, nice penetration, offensive foul. John Clarkity makes the good call. Turner up in the air. Turner, a big-time winner, three times for the final game of the NCAA tournament. Now, here's Turner. Now, he's going to leave his feet. Once he leaves his feet, look at the rotation over. Rotation by Florida in the defense. Good, good position and gets the charge. Turner shadows Shannon all the way up court. I think Clarkley's following me around. He had the game last night. He was Duke. following me on Tuesday. Wow. Here's Wright. Wright was 7 for 7 against Kentucky in the first matchup. Miller, the freshman, sensational ball handler for a big guy. He's an inside-outside player, Miller. Certainly an outstanding diaper Dan. Coming off his best performance in their last game. Shannon, nice penetration by Eddie Shannon. Shannon with that good drive to the goal. He could become the all-time leader at Florida in steals. Hashimu Evans doubled. Got it to Padgett. Nice pass to Turner. We're going to have some pace game here tonight. I mean, they are going up and down the floor. Depth will be a factor, and both teams are pretty deep. There's Shannon now with that good drive. Again, protecting the basketball, sealing off the defense, and with the conversion. Nice inbound play to Hashimu Evans. He got away from Miller. Evans and Padgett and Turner, three big-time winners. Such great winning experience. Kentucky has its first lead of 6-4. And a Florida turnover. An up-and-down style. You'll cause a lot of turnovers, but you'll also have some of your own. Yeah, creates a lot of offense as well. Padgett went four for four, shooting the three against Florida. There it goes. This one's off the mark. Evans keeps it alive. Evans is much more comfortable, Brad, playing that small forward than he was yeah. on a perimeter. 
when they when made they that had, change. When they had the big lineup, he seemed to be a little out of sync, and now back where he belongs, I think. What a class he got. He got voted the sexiest man in Lexington. <laughs> Did you see that by some you, magazine? You won a national championship. You can get voted anything in Lexington. Wow, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. The guy's got it all. Looks, personality. There's that slump that Dick was talking about that Hashimu Evans went through, and he popped out of that against Auburn with 20 and really has been playing that kind of basketball we saw earlier in the season now. Had nine rebounds in that game when Auburn was 17 and all. He tries to get it down and somehow does to Bradley, and he lost the handle. Kentucky turns it over. So far, Kentucky doing a good job on a perimeter because they love to shoot the three, Florida. They make eight a game. And in weeks, the pace slows momentarily. It'll give and go with Shannon and Wright out on top. Teddy Dupay could be a factor off the bench the way he shoots the rock. Good man-to-man -man defense. Eight on the shot clock. Ball oh, what three. a pass. Haslam's in the right spot. I'll tell you one thing about Haslam. You talk about a powerful player on the inside with super strength. He's an Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's you, the dominator. Tied at six. Turner got up in the air and drew a foul for Major Parker. Haslam probably was the least publicized of all the superstars that they brought in in that great class. I thought that ball just got loose. It was. Yeah, Weeks got loose, and there's Haslam pounding on it because Dupay and Mike Miller got most of the publicity. Right. Weeks is going to get credit for an assist there, though. <laughs> He'll take it. He missed nine games, was suspended, some disciplinary action. Last year, he shot 50% from the three-point line yeah. to lead the SEC. Here's Padgett. He can shoot the three when he gets warmed up. He's missed two, though, here. He had a big game in the overtime. You did the game with Larry Conley, 10 points against Georgia. 10 of his 23 in that OT game last Tuesday night. That was a dandy down in Athens. Let me do the sun, GG. Yep. Tough loss for the Bulldogs. We've had a few of those this year. Smith matched up here with Teddy Dupay. Charles Smith almost came up with a steal, and then he fouls Teddy Dupay. Teddy Dupay, an amazing story for you young people. That kid averaged, you ready for this? <laughs> 40 points a game in high school. Think about this, Brad. I'm a dummy, but if you get 20, you got to come back and get 60. <laughs> <laughs> We're tied at six. The Odom is rocking in Gainesville. At six, just four minutes in, and Billy Donovan says this game is a series of four-minute games. To me, playing it in four-minute segments, we're playing at high octane, we finished that four-minute segment, okay, now it's the next four minutes, let's get after it. I think if you can break the game down into small pieces, you know, uh, sometimes you say, okay, the first 20 minutes or the second 20 minutes, that's a lot of time. We've got to be a very focused, disciplined team for just for four minutes. Then let's regroup and let's get refocused again and, and treat it that way. And Dick, they've already cleared the first hurdle you talked about, not getting nervous early and getting through that first four minutes. Exactly, and he learned that under the maestro, one of the brilliant coaches ever to coach a college sideline, Rick Pitino. Rick really was a believer in that. Get your kids to play hard in certain segments and play that, those segments, and that's what he's doing. And also, Tubby Smith has the same philosophy. They both run that staff with Rick. They've been tied at two, four, and six. Dick Lola with a chance to regain the lead. Stolt in the lineup for the first time. One of the captains on this Florida team. He can shoot the three. Definitely a threat from the perimeter. Kentucky doing a great job coming out on the three, not allowing him to get that good look from out there on the perimeter. Teddy Dupay backs up at 10 on the shot clock. Got to get some screens for Teddy. Stolt sets one for him. Padgett gave a little wave, and Dupay with a left hand got it. He can score, Brad. This kid is a solid college contributor. A lot of people didn't think he can play at this level, but he can flat out play. Full court heat again from Florida. They lead by two. The first four minutes of the previous meeting was 14 to 4 Kentucky in the first four minutes. So as we said, not only has Florida stayed with this one, they lead it. Allison, nice drive on the baseline. Didn't finish, and Miller will clear it off to the Gators. That's what I like about his game. He's very athletic, Allison. Parker. It's a five-point lead. That's what they can do, and they do it really well. They practice that so often. Shoot the three. He learned that when he played for Patino in 87 when he went to the Final Four, and he was shooting it with Providence. Jamal McGlore backs in with a left hand. McGlore has really given him solid minutes lately. Coming in, giving him positive minutes offensively and defensively. Well, I've been in Florida in past years in Gainesville where 
this week all everybody talked about was football recruiting and I am telling you this place is on fire tonight yeah football recruiting taking place big time as you watch Dupe with that drive down the lane I mean he challenged good screen takes the ball up with the left hand and they're not afraid to shoot the three in transition it is major right there we'll make him a general he keeps knocking <laughs> that sucker down 11-8 Florida game is big. Hubert Mizell's even here with a great writers of Florida. In fact, was the recipient of Writer of the Year of Florida again from out of St. Petersburg. He's a good one. Yeah, he's in his glory right now with the Final Four up there. <laughs> Aslam. Good pay. Oh, nice cut. Parker and the kick out to Stoller can shoot it and got it. They can shoot it. Stoke can shoot it. Miller can shoot it. Dupe can shoot it. And Kenya Waits can shoot it. A 204th career three-pointer for Greg Stoll. It's 14 to 8. I don't think we're going to see a 35-point blowout tonight, Mr. Nestle. I agree, Mr. Vital. I don't think we're going to see a 35-point blowout tonight. And Tubby told me that before the game. Tubby said to me before the game, I just see right here the kick out to the wing. Major kicks it out. And here's the jumper. He told me before the game, he said, well, our best performance was against Florida, and our next best was Maryland. 10-2. Run right now in progress for Florida. They've put together 32 runs this year of 8-0 or more. So they're a streaky team, and they're on a good streak right now. It's really interesting, as you said, about the contrasting styles. Kentucky leads the conference 37 points 37 percentage field goal percentage defensively and on the other side florida leads the league in scoring right. and is ninth in the nation scoring better than 82 points a game inbound knocked out of bounds and off florida four point lead florida had a six point lead and had a chance to add to that it was a turnover story the second fewest in the conference belongs to kentucky and they forced 21 turnovers with their pressure. Padgett, nice movement down to Hogan. Got the open jumper. He got hit. And that might be a three-shot free throw. Said, nope, it's just inside the line. Curtis Shaw says it's two. The one negative, though, when you look at Florida, and I would be concerned as a coach, they have winning margin in terms of their wins is better than 22 points a game, but their losses are better than yep. 21 points a game. But again, let's look who they lost though. They lost that Duke, right. they we lost that Auburn, mm -hmm. and they lost that uh, Kentucky. Yeah. And then they got upset by Mississippi State where they had a big lead and let it slide away from them on Saturday. So that's when you really have to look not just at the statistics, but who they're playing. I mean, Duke, Kentucky, and Auburn are all three top 10 teams in the nation. Duke was scary good last night, Brad. They Mike were, Patrick right? and I could not believe <laughs> They were scary good against Maryland. And there's what Dick was talking about. The Gator losses have been lopsided. The, the one that really hurts is the Mississippi State game that was over the weekend. Billy was telling me all the things they have to do to get an NCAA tournament bid. I said, Billy, 15-4, relax. You're in the SEC. One of the great conferences, you will be in the big dance unless they totally collapse. You know, talking about that loss to Mississippi State, here's another one for you. The Florida Gators have not lost back-to-back -back games this year. Well, that's something to keep in mind. They're off to a good start here, leading by four. Hogan got both free throws. And I don't want Kentucky fans to hear this, but you and I don't did the say game. It, <laughs> you and I did the game. You know, when's the last time they lost when they, oh, yeah. before they had that winning streak on the road? Tennessee. Two years ago. No, two years ago on the road to South Carolina. Oh, that's right, yep. And two years ago to this day. Mackey and Watson in that group ambushed them. That was two years ago to this day. You and I did the game. It was overtime. Right, we had Hootie and the Blowfish there. With yeah, us Hootie and the Blowfish, Sterling Sharp was there. Yep. They were all there. Kentucky, Kentucky will have it on the baseline. I just love the Kentucky uniform. When I see that uniform, I think of all that tradition. And when you walk into Rupp Arena, it's just magical. And all the great players flash in front of your eyes. Got their 300 wins now in Rupp. Hogan in nice the pass. traffic to Prince. McGlure missed the tip, but Kamara didn't. I think Kamara is going to become a star. I really believe he's going to be a special player in a Kentucky uniform. Once he matures, he gets a little bit stronger physically. Cats cut it down to two. Playing a little zone right now. Multiple defenses trying to trap out of it. Florida has not missed a shot yet. 
They lead by two. That's a Saturday. We've got a lot of hoop action. Triple header, as a matter of fact. Noon, Temple takes on Lamar Odom in Rhode Island at 7.30 Eastern. Syracuse fresh off their win over UConn against Villanova. Then at 9.30, Oklahoma hosts Oklahoma State. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Turnover, Florida. Want to learn a little bit about how to play the matchup zone? Watch that game. Temple, John Cheney, a master. Hogan drives again. McGlure. Almost the same play as we saw the last trip down. Prince from way outside. Hogan's in that traffic somehow. Kentucky rebounded a lot better than the game you and I had when they lost to Tennessee. In fact, they've only been out rebounded twice. twice. Yep. Billy Donovan styling all GQ. He's done really wonders here with this program. Getting so much excitement since taking over. Florida has done an improvement in their rebounding from a year ago, too. In fact, they were the first team to out-rebound Auburn this year. So they've gotten better on the glass, and part of it's that big fella right there. 12 minutes. I was a bit concerned of Florida, and really concerned about neutralizing Kentucky on the glass. Turner, a cut that he didn't see the pass coming. A little too much on it. He can Weeks. shoot it. Missed the three, but Eddie Shannon's going to shag it down. I really think you hurt yourself. When you're out of the lineup and you're suspended for nine games, that's going to affect you a little bit. It's a long time to get that rushed off. Stolt thought about it. Miller will take it. Right, strong rebound. Blocked by Kamara. He'll try it again. Just attacking inside against the shot blockers. McGlure, Kamara. Turner breaks the pressure. Wayne leaves it for McGlore. Almost too good a pass. McGlore offensive interference. interference. Yes, sir. Offensive interference. But what a great look by Wayne Turner, who's a blue chip point guard on a collegiate level. 11 11 to go, first half. They're loving it in Gainesville. They're up by four. Those two guys repelled their way in, I think. I'm not Love sure. Wacky. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Gator Rebels, look at these two guys. They want to get a wrestling ring. They had Rick. Flair here for Midnight Madness, and I was here for Midnight Rick's, Madness. Rick's my favorite guy. Oh, he's something else. Big game in the SEC, and here's some of the notes. Auburn off to its best start in school history under Cliff Ellis. Kentucky, the lone unbeaten team on the road, and B.J. Mackey, our congratulations, not only on being the SEC Player of the Week, but past Alex English. Almost 2,000 points for B.J., and he is one fine player, not quite surrounded by the cast he's had in past years there, but he's a special kid. Well, you know, the cream always rises, and I talk about Eddie Fogler right now going through a tough time at South Carolina. Well, you look at all the great years he's had at Vanderbilt and Wichita State. The bottom line is he will get back again. There's no doubt about it. He's too fierce a competitor. He's too good a coach. Florida with maybe their biggest basketball game in the who knows how many years. He couldn't get a ticket to this thing tonight. Steele. By Turner. That play by Miller hanging in the air. Allison nice leaves it for Turner and count it and a chance for a three-point play. Kentucky really knows how to execute in transition. Always looking for the open man. Very unselfish. Billy Donovan frustrated with that play. Look at the young guy working that sideline. I just can think, it seems like yesterday, yesteryear when he was shooting the jump shot as we see the turnover. There's Allison with a good look to Turner. When he was playing in 87, the year Indiana cut the Nets down. He played with Providence and they went to the Final Four. Really, the kid, still the youthful exuberance, only now on the sideline. He's only, what, 33, I guess? See, kids love playing for this style. And why wouldn't you want to come to Florida? The warm weather, beautiful campus. Up-tempo basketball. A coach you can relate with. I'm ready to play. <laughs> Down to a one-point lead. After the way he saw me shoot before the game, he said, there's no way. <laughs> and Bay and Miller. Playing too much on the perimeter. Yep. Going sideline. Got to attack the gap. And they throw it away again. Stolt with an air pass. Allison picks it off. And a chance for Kentucky to take the lead back. Got a turnover by Miller. You don't want to go east to west. You want to go north-south and attack in that zone. Bradley wheels on Stolt. Knocked away from him by Wright. Nice hustle by Scott Padgett, who almost ended up in our lap. But still, Florida comes up with a loose ball. Florida's done a great job keeping the ball away from Padgett. Has not been a factor. He, he can pay, shoot it. Goes straight up. Got it. He can flat out shoot it. You don't average 40 points a game, baby, without being able to shoot the rock. 
Pre-game warm-ups. I saw him take one from about 35 just goofing around with Mike Miller and it hit the bottom of the net. And the kids behind us went crazy and he picks up where he left off here in the real thing, the game itself. And he plays so hard, Brad. Evans, nice look to Padgett. What a pass. Bradley inside. Walked with it. What a pass by Padgett. He does so many things. Multi-dimensional. He can post you inside. I heard Larry Conley talk, and I agree. He's an excellent low post player. I think he's the best big man passer in the SEC. I would agree with that. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale with you at the O-Dome, and it is oh so loud tonight. They expect maybe a record crowd of 12,500, something like that. We'll know by halftime, but... They have enjoyed what they've seen so far. Four point Florida lead. Miller. He got the three. We're looking at diaper dandies, my friends. We're looking at young people. Dupe, Miller. I mean, these are kids. Haslow. Back to back three pointers, and the lead that was down to one is up to seven. And that's what that three point shot can do for you. They got this crowd in the game, Brad. Hashimo way off. The, rebound. the game plan of Billy Donovan is being executed to perfection right now. Weeks trying to look down to Brent Wright. Good thought, but a better turn, a better uh, steal by Evans, and now it's Turner on the layup. This Turner out in transition. He excels in the open court wing, Turner. Dupe goes straight up with it. Now that one he rushed over Padgett, too. This is where Turner really excels in the open court. Allison reads his way out of some trouble. Freshman making his fourth start. He's had three double figure games in those four. Brent Wright can't stay with Hashimu Evans on that baseline move. He picks up his second foul. Kentucky, what a story. You, see, you talk about teams and you look at the decade and you see their success. Kansas is number one and wins with 277, followed by Kentucky 273, Carolina 264, 255. And people forget Arkansas in the decade. Yep. 253. Nolan Richardson's done a phenomenal job there in the 90s. They got a big win against Tennessee the other night at Bud Wall. They got a up by five. They got a three-point shooter in Pat Bradley, who could become the all-time leader in the SEC. 346 is the number by Allen Houston. He's going to pass. He's only about seven short. Shimu Evans. Speaking of threes, three-point resurgence. Billy Donovan, and he knows all about that. His Marshall teams were unbelievable three-point shooting. Yeah, they made ten a game. He is instituted that early. Hey, last year down in Kentucky, Florida played a brilliant game. Jason Williams, Brent Musburger, and I did the game with AC on ABC. He was unbelievable. The kid that was drafted in the first round. Yeah, seventh by Sacramento. And he got suspended. Sad story that that happened, but he's bounced back now. Here's Miller for three. Yes. You're looking at a guy, six, seven and a half, who can really jump. He won the slam jam bam contest as a jumper. He is going to be a special player on the college scene. Look at his full court pressure. Padgett usually doesn't handle it that much, but he does a nice job to get it in the front court. You don't want to pick up that dribble. A little trap out of the runner's jump. Allison for three and rattled out, but McGlure tips it in. Jamal McGlure working on the inside from out of Canada. Always been known as a good defensive player and a shot blocker. Move by Miller and Allison with a touch foul on it. I really like Miller. I like his all court game. I like the ability that he has to go inside and outside. Cubby Smith spoke very highly of him as well. Well, Miller's part of the reason that Florida maintains a four point lead with seven minutes, 28 seconds remaining in an exciting first half in the SEC. It's Miller and company. It's Miller time here in Gainesville. Now, been a dandy so far at O'Connell Center, 25-21. Florida leads by four with 7.28 to go. They're doing it with some good three-point shooting. That's Miller right here from the corner. Dupe goes up for one of his three-pointers. Miller on top of the circle. I'll tell you, that's what they've had to do here tonight, make the three to stay in this game. Now we're going to see them shooting the three. Now watch this right here. We're going to watch freeze it. See, already he's calling for it. He wants the ball to shape up right here, Dupe. And there's the kick out. He catches it. And, baby, he knows what to do when he gets it. Tickles the twine. Just like the guy that came over to say hello to us a minute ago. The Goose. The Goose, Mr. Givens, former Kentucky great, 1978, leading Joe B. Hall to that national championship. Scored 41. 
Time for him to get back to work, do some NBA games. Yeah, they start playing. We've probably got Rick Pitino watching his two guys tonight. Five threes already, as you saw the students putting it up on the railing here for Florida, and they maintain the lead. They have, they were tied at the first time out at six. They led by four the second four-minute segment, led by four the third-minute segment. So they're playing it just like Billy Donovan talked about. Four-minute increments and staying ahead of the defending national champs. Foul inside on Kentucky. They really like to set screens for it and step back from the screen because the guy that sets the screen becomes sometimes the most dangerous guy on the floor. People get a little relaxed, steps back, and knocks down that three. Foul is on Saul Smith, his second, and it sends Udonis Haslam to the free throw line, a 63 percenter on the year. He's got some pins, boy. I will tell you, what a pair of guns this guy's yep. got. From out of Miami, Miami Senior High School. Look at this right here, Sidney Moncrief. Is he special? Wow. Haslam, Haslam yep, right seven right now. Hit both free throws, two six points for the big fella. Sidney Moncrief, part of the triplets when he played down in Arkansas. Brewer and Dolph, coached by Eddie Sutton. Six-point lead here. On a staff that year when Eddie Sutton had a team was Gene Cady. Nice ball movement by Kentucky Evans down low. And, we'll go over. and he hammers it home. What a clinic on how to move the basketball. That ball never touched the floor. No, nobody dribbled. Here's a steal by Evans. Only one dribble this time. Bradley got it. They do an amazing job in transition. Kentucky has really excelled in transition over the last few years. They really do such a phenomenal job, always looking for the open man, pushing the ball up the court. Look at the way, freeze it, right here. They know where the ball's going, man. They got that look. It is unbelievable. They always look for the open guy. What a tremendous job in putting clinic on one of the transition games. Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play here for Michael Bradley. Not a good free-throw shooter, but he got the roll. Got that nice touch. He's really been a pleasant surprise. I don't think they projected him to be this good his second year. Averaging almost 12 points and six rebounds a game, and he has cut the Gator lead to a single digit with 640 to go in the half. His dad played at Fairfield for Fred Barrowcat. Got it. Our friend, the associate of commissioner at the ACC. I've been seeing Freddie in about a month at the ACC tournament. Does, Not before. Does a great job running it. Eight on the shot clock. Stolt goes up. Got the triple. That's an example of what I talked about earlier, Brad. He set the screen, stepped back from the screen, and made it count. Up by four again. Every time Kentucky makes a push to cut it down to one, the Gators rip a three on the other end. I don't know about you, I feel we're going to have something special here tonight. That intensity is really special. Double team on Bradley, still trying to look to get it to McGlore, and he just powered his way in there. McGlore with a strong move to the basket. Caught it and took that baby up immediately. Haslam way away from the basket. they got to pack him down low. Now he gets in the low block. I tell you, McGlure really works defensively, beating him from close position. Miller just ran by Padgett, but McGlure blocked the shot. Yeah, McGlure did a great job giving help to Padgett, because Padgett was flat out beaten on that play. Oh, there's the back door to Turner. Great look by Padgett. You really gamble. When you're gambling defensively like Florida is gambling, you're going to leave people open. Look at the jubilation in Kentucky. What great seconds. play. 20 second timeout. Jamal McGlure didn't start this game, but he has come off the bench with a fury. Eight points, including this one down low. Now watch him defensively, Brad. Does a great job rotating over. See, he takes right at Miller like a human eraser. And there's the great look inside. Allison with the back cut. No, Turner with the back cut. The good look by Padgett. Seven for Turner. We've got our fourth tie of the ball game, even at 30. Look at the big men. Look at the way they pass the basketball. They account for 43% of the team assists. Eddie Dupay back in at the point. Stolt, Dupay, Miller, all great three-point shooters out there. It's going to be Halton, but will Halt play with a whistle and a foul down low on Jamal McGlure. Ladarius Halton's another young kid. He was starting he's earlier this year, lost his starting job. But they think he's going to become an outstanding player. He's a slasher, very aggressive, was a big-time scorer on the high school level. 
So now it's free throw time for Udonis Haslam, who hit the last two. Haslam, who led Miami Senior High School to a third straight 6A title last year. And they got another kid coming in from Miami Senior next year, one of a great group of recruits that Billy Donovan put together, including Brett Nelson from West Virginia, who I trust you more than anybody because I know you better than anybody, but you said the kid can really play. Oh, I'll tell you something, Brad. I saw him at the Adidas All-American camp. I left there. My eyes were hanging. I could not <laughs> believe some of the magic. He's averaging about 35 a game right now, and he will put an unbelievable show, have people standing in the aisle going bananas watching him play. What a talent. Brett Nelson. And the kid you're talking about from Miami Senior, 6'10", Silver Robinson. Yep. You add that to this group, which is mostly freshmen and sophomores right now, with the exception of Shannon and Stolt, the two captains. And a year or two down the road, this might be a national championship contending team, if not sooner, for Florida. They got another kid named Bonner, 6'9", everybody wanted, and a kid by the name of Hamilton who's outstanding from Sarasota, Justin Hamilton. And a foul on Hashimu Evans, who hooks somebody down in the baseline trying to get position. And Moo ends up with his first foul. We're going to watch Evans trying to post inside. See, he's trying to go against Dupe down in a low block. Look at this. Look at this. He hooks him. And Dupe really works and works and gets the offensive foul called on him. What a little bulldog he is. Yeah, tough little guy. Goes to the free throw line now on the other end. Five points for the Mr. Basketball from the state of Florida last year. He's got great touch on a free throw line. And I jinxed him. That one rattled out. And I jinxed him. <laughs> he was shooting 82%. That one comes out on him with a chance for the Cats to tie with 4.37 left first half. A lot of energy needed. Exercised on that floor defensively by Florida. Haslam got a little piece of McGlure down low and picks up his first foul of the ball game. Tune into the Deuce coming up Saturday, a day-night doubleheader. First at 1 o'clock Eastern, Georgia Tech will host what might be the top-ranked team in the land next Monday. That game subject to blackout and a terrific rivalry. Utah takes on BYU. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of Go Network, go.com. Hey, Brad, the other day, Utah put the hurt on New Mexico at New Mexico, blew them out. And people better start considering Andre Miller as a player of the year. The kid's having a phenomenal year for Rick Majerus. He is one great guard, and they had a little bit of a downswing there, but they're back in gear, and they've won, what, 9-10 in a row now, something like they're that? They're 16 to 4, and the reason they started to really get better, they got this kid, Tony Harvey. All of a sudden, he's back in their lineup, and he's been a big plus. Jamal McGlore got one of two, and Dupay... Picks up the carom. Haslam looks hurt right here. He's holding his hip. Or if he took one of the ribs, or maybe lower. <laughs> I'm not sure, but he's going to try to stay out there. Billy Donovan better keep him away from Steve Spurrier. This guy looks like he'd be <laughs> one heck of a defensive end. I think it got hit low. He's going to stay out there. But the officials wisely stop play to make sure he was all right. So it's a one-point Gator lead again. The last three times Kentucky's cut it to one. Florida's answered with a three on the other end. The one area that Billy Donovan told me before the game he's concerned with is passing the ball. He said against Mississippi State, they made 2.2 passes with each possession. He said that's not going to get it done. We've got to move the ball. Dupe trying to loft one over the tall timber inside, and it's off the mark, and Kentucky can lead if they score. Hogan packs it down low to McGlure's hook shot. And Padgett's going to be called for a foul as Haslam had position for that rebound. And Padgett trying to poke the ball away, picks up his first. Scott Padgett's really been big for them in overtime. In fact, you had both games. You and I did the Indiana game, and he really stepped up big when yep. they needed him. And you had the game against Georgia where he gets 10 points in the OT and sparked him. Just one this week was named as... The SEC's Good Works team for his charity efforts in the community and around Lexington. We honor uh, Scott Padgett, tip our cap to him on that honor. Haslam on a free throw line on the sideline with Billy Donovan as an assistant coach is John Pelfrey, who played as a member of the Unforgettables, right. but he had Richie Farmer in that gang. That was the team that got beat in 92. They got beat as Pelfrey on the left. He's not cheering for Kentucky no, tonight. Not. And in 92, that's the team that lost that heartbreaker to Christian Leitner and Duke. Gators maintain their lead, this time from the free throw line. As Haslam hit a couple. 34-31, Gators trying to put the bite on the Cats here at the Odo. Three 
point lead here at O'Connell Center for Florida. They've led it every break so far with 3.53 left to go in the first half and already six three-pointers for them in this first half. Dick. Hey, Brad, you and I were talking about the guy that sets the screen being the most dangerous player. Well, we're going to see this here. Watch number 24 with the high screen and stepping back, shooting the three. Right here, freeze it. So he's going to lay the screen in this area here, and then he's going to step back, and he's going to take it and reverse the ball to him. Now, there's the screen right here. Now, we watch it. Freeze it. And right here, knows what to do at that three-point line. That baby's going right to the <laughs> hole. That's going right to the hole. There it is. Stepping back, knocking it down. NBN, nothing but nylon. They can shoot the three. And are in this first half. Florida's freshmen doing their job. 21 points so far. Shooting 67% from the trifecta. Bernie really understands the role of the point guard. If you had to define a point guard and understanding his role, he does, but he turned it over there. He did. Just when you said that, it's a bad pass. Today goes to the free throw line. He's usually automatic. He misses. Stolt way out. Weeks trying to tip it in, and McGlure will clear off the glass. McGlure becomes a factor inside with that size. Big and strong around the basket. Another chance for Kentucky. To cut it to one. McGlure runs over. Nope. Dupe is going to be called for the blocking foul. They get the block on Dupe. A little slow rotating over. Florida foul is on number five, Tinny Dupe. His first. Ball's going to go inside. There's McGlure with a little gut cut. Look at the little kid having the guts to try and step in there. You got to give him credit for that. Wow, I don't know about credit. Are you smart doing that? <laughs> he's, he's holding on to 260 pounds and 6'10 there and trying to hold his ground. Jamal McGlure. And every time he misses, the student body's really going to be all over him because he's the one Kentucky player that reacted when they came out for the pregame warm ups to the, uh, the reptile section behind us here, the student body. They were all over him. And he's been drawing back and forth with them since about an hour before the game. Yeah. He missed them both. And he shouldn't be doing it. I'll tell you, he's had a little problem throughout his career with some discipline problems. Got himself involved in a little fracas down in Louisville. He should just be concerned. Wear the Kentucky uniform, be proud of it, and just play. Haslam trying to kick it out to DePay, and Turner got a hand on that. They can't get the ball inside to Haslam. And I just got to credit McGlure doing a good job uh -huh. defensively. Absolutely. Pay dishes out, tried to, and Hogan stole it. Not a good play right there by Dupe. Hanging in the air. Can't do anything up there. Here's Padgett. Bats out. And it rim out, but the follow by Hogan. What a nice play by Hogan to come up with that. His uncle's jumping with joy right now. Kevin Grevy said, hey, that's my nephew. One point lead again for Florida. Haslam, finally, they get it in his hands, and he faces up on McGlure and spins inside. Comes back out, Stoltz got it, buried it through. What a nice job making the extra pass. The extra pass created the opportunity for the three. The fourth time, Dick, in five times that Kentucky's got it to one point, but Florida's answered with a three-pointer on the other end. And that three-point shot has just revolutionized basketball. Rick Pitino, to me, was the first guy to really adjust and to adopt it immediately when it became a part of the scene back in the Middle Ages. 37-33, and here's what we're talking about. Just when Kentucky had cut it to one, the extra pass and stole with his third three-pointer of the first half. A lot of coaches were very slow in adjusting to it. And it's amazing to see the influence of Rick Pitino on so many young coaches, guys like the Donovans and the Tubby Smith. So sad to see one of his guys really have a bad scene down in Pittsburgh, Rob Rapport Willard, but he'll, he'll resurface. The three-man weave on top of Miller handling that basketball at 6'8". If you like to step out on that, all you got to do is step out and take that weave away. Weeks. Miller, great rebound. Throws it back up there and drew a foul. You are right, Brad. That was a great rebound. That was a lateral rebound. Not a guy getting a rebound right in the same area of the floor. He went up and just went after that basketball. I was talking with Mike before the game as we're going to see his work on the glass here. I didn't know there'd be basketball players like that in South Dakota. That's what I was kidding him about. I said, where do you 
come from Mitchell, South Dakota, all the way to Florida. His basketball family. He's got a great family. His brother Ryan, he says he's headed to Australia to play overseas professionally. His other brother is playing back at Northern State in South Dakota, and he says he's averaging like 22 a game. Yeah. I said, are you the end of the line? He says, no, my little sister's in eighth grade. And he says, she's not a bad player. She's already <laughs> starting for the varsity. Wow. You know, I've never been to South Dakota or North Dakota. That's the high screen by Bradley. Hashimu Evans wide open on the baseline. And trying to keep it alive, and Miller picks up the loose ball, and now it's going to be a foul way over there in the corner on Ryan Hogan. Both clubs really like to utilize the high post screen. One twenty-three left in this first half. Courtyard by Marriott. Halftime report is coming up. Chris will be along with Brad Doherty. They'll take a look at the Big Ten action. North Carolina and Clemson in the ACC. And we'll preview Memphis and Louisville. They've had some dandies between those two teams over the years. And they follow us tonight. Louisville's been a major disappointment. They beat Kentucky. And it's really surprising to see how they've fallen off on tough times. They had that one week that really affected them. At home, they get blitzed by Cincinnati by 81-55. And then they get beat severely by a good young, a bunch of young kids from UCLA. Miller got them both that time. And the lead is back to seven, Dick. Yeah, they just don't seem like they're going away. As we said earlier, there'll be no 35 point blowout tonight. Hogan wanted to take a three, and number three stole it from him. Eddie Shannon on the run. And he's fouled. What a great play Shannon made. He made a tremendous defensive play. Look at this young man. Had surgery and eyes removed, playing with one eye. What a great inspiration. Take a look at Eddie Shannon right here. He'll become the all-time leader in steals. You can see why. Look at this guy. He's got a great attitude. What a gracious young man. Foul on Kamara sends Eddie to the free throw line. It's when he drops the glasses for a better look. That one rims out on him. I had a great talk with him earlier this year at the Midnight Madness. I have one eye. I, my vision in my left eye is gone. But in his case, it's even a little bit more drastic. He had his eye removed. Right. And it's, it's a whole different ball game. And his happened later in life. Mine happened so young that I got acclimated to it. Eddie's happened, uh, I think it's seventh grade. And he hits one of two. And there's the biggest lead of the night for the Gators, leading the defending national champions in a game they've anticipated since last year and waited and waited for and they're living up to the billing they lead by eight well they're playing with a lot of pride you're right brad it happened in the seventh grade the accident but he finally had the eye i guess moved this earlier this year ashima evans nice pass to mcglore who's going to go to the free throw line always trying to make the extra pass kentucky part of their trademark unselfish basketball play together Create opportunities for each other. Two shots. Jamal miss, missed his last three from the free throw line. It was really similar in the way as he misses that free throw again between both programs. When you take a look at the football and basketball combinations and coaches, it's really similar. Football at Kentucky's become a run, a run and shoot kind of situation. Right. Money, and the yep. same here. Steve Spurrier, of course, brought the excitement of football to this place and now. They've got basketball excitement. McGlore has missed five straight free throws. Hogan goes back up. And jump ball. Let's see. Possession's going to go to the Gators. You know, that's reminiscent of him missing five. Remember in the NCAA championship when Nazi yeah. Muhammad had that bad, bad situation on the free throw line and went out and made himself a big time player with great work ethic. I thought he should have been in school. He would have been all American first team this year. There's about a 12 second difference on the game clock and the shot clock here. So Florida's going to have to loft the well, first one up and a foul on McGlure. He and Haslam banging down low. Haslam trying to hold position down inside. McGlure certainly getting a lot more playing time this year because of the departure of Nazi Mohammed. What I liked about Muhammad, he came in, he was not rated as a great player and really worked and worked and worked and made himself a player. Udonis, and those are not boos in the background. Those are U's. Udonis. <laughs> Udonis. He's got 10 points. He's like Adonis. Udonis is like He's Adonis. Adonis, you're not kidding. He's hit six straight. Oops. <laughs> I tell you. 
substitutions. Look at this right now. Look at these two guys fighting inside. Do you think there's a foul there? Do you think maybe there's about seven fouls? <laughs> maybe nine or ten? The only thing we didn't have was a knockout. Wow. I think maybe they were thinking about Ric Flair down there. <laughs> Time for a body slam. 34 was... seconds left in the half. And they're up by nine now. You have nice touch for a big fella, even from 15 feet. A lot of times you see guys score around the basket, but they can't step to the line. This is going to sit down now, and he'll get a 34-second extra breather before the break. Kentucky will have the final shot. I think Billy would like to be able to stay in that locker room and not come back out. They were the 2-3 zone. The zone really hurt them against Kentucky in the first matchup. Hogan's a good outside shooter. He's kind of waiting on it on the wing, but they're not going to make their move yet. Wayne Turner has a look. Evans a good three-point shooter, so is Tayshawn Prince. A lot of people feel you can zone Kentucky, but if they get hot from that three, they can really create problems for you with that zone. There it goes from Hogan, but he missed it. Shannon has a man in front. Weeks, tough catch, got it. He got it. No, they're going to wave it off. Walk, you got a walk in violation. Oh, what a big play that would have been to go in at halftime. What a lift that would have been. Oh, what a way to go to halftime anyway. They head to the locker room against the fifth-ranked team in the country. The most anticipated game here in years. Here's the last play. Weeks on the break. Had trouble finding the handle. And John Clockerty waved it off as he said that time had expired right before he slammed that home. But they're trying to slam Kentucky anyway. 42-33, a nine-point halftime lead. Courtyard by Marriott halftime reports coming up. Chris and Brad, guys. All right, Brad, thank you very much for well, that 15-game super impressive conference road winning streak. Very much in trouble. A lot of time left, though, for Kentucky. They've been in this position before. Yeah, Kentucky will make a run at Florida, no doubt about it. Very impressed with what Florida's done so far. Came out with a lot of energy, a lot of intensity, knocked down a lot of three-point baskets. The most important part of this game is going to be the next five minutes for them. They have to be ready to match the intensity that they started with. Didn't see Kentucky hit a three. That's been one of their problems in the first half. Coming up on our Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report, scores and highlights. We'll also look ahead to that Louisville-Memphis game, which follows us on our Thursday triple header. Come on back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Certain Team Building Products. For durability, style, and comfort, it's quality made certain, satisfaction guaranteed. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Heineken, brewed true since 1886. Heineken, and by the new 1999 TL. Luxury, performance, pick two. A nine-point halftime lead. The Florida Gators try to pull an upset at home tonight, 42-33. We welcome you back to O'Connell Center. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale along with you. We talked about how important the shooting, especially the three-point shooting of Florida would be tonight. They're shooting better from outside the arc than they are a regular field goals tonight, Dick. Well, you know, Brad, they're averaging eight threes made per game. They've already made seven. And on the other side, Kentucky has been blank 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Whenever Kentucky has struggled from the three this year, they have usually lost. They've really come up empty in that area. 0 for 7, as you see, 7 for 12 for Florida. And that's the difference in the first half. You can't have Scott Paget on the schneid either at 0 for 3. He's only taking wow. three shots. Only, but what about this? No rebounds. Right. No points, no rebounds, and 60 minutes. It's not like he only played three minutes. He's going to have to step up big. I really believe the four minutes after halftime, just like last night, it was pertinent that Maryland get a good start. They did not, right. and Duke blew the game away in the first four minutes. These four minutes are going to be crucial to Kentucky. Something to keep in mind. Kentucky hasn't lost this year when they've led at half. But when they've been trailing at halftime, they're only two and four. And they're in a pretty big hole right now. The way Florida's playing, nine points might be a lot. They're going to have to continue to make the three, Florida, to be able to survive against this scrappy Kentucky team. The one thing you and I know, we've been around the game a lot, Brad, and we've seen Kentucky a lot. They'll never, ever quit. Padgett on top, guarded by right. Come out with aggressive defense. 15 on the shot clock. Padgett drives the baseline. Now he's 0 for 4. Didn't even look good shooting that basketball. Really hesitated. Control, making sure they have some patience on offense is important for Florida. And their a lack of patience maybe on that pass. Florida turnover, their 13th. Each team had a dozen at the break. 
I get some touches inside to Bradley because he's so effective when he gets the ball in deep. He kicks it out to Padgett. Wide open three. It rimmed out. Bradley got it back, and he's fouled underneath. Well, the one thing you can see right out of the gate, Padgett trying to get involved offensively right out of the gate. Aslan picks up his second foul. The national scene really heating up now for teams like Kentucky in terms of trying to get that high status for a seed. I know we have the same thing I'm going Saturday with Brett Musburger for that Connecticut Stanford game, and that becomes a big game in terms of keeping a number one seed. Turner, the outside shot off the mark, thought he was fouled, and he didn't get the call that he was looking for. Of course, that UConn game will be huge. Depends on Rip Hamilton, I think, is probably expected to play. Haslam. What a great job posting inside. You're right, Brad. They think he'll play. They also think Buskell's going to play. The lead has ballooned to double digits, and only in their wildest dreams would they have expected to have a double-digit lead. Bradley cuts it back to nine. Well, Bradley wide open, did a great job running the ball. Kentucky down the sideline and found the open man. Look at Allison working defensively. What a good athlete he is. You think about halfway through that game in Lexington on January 2nd, Florida could have ever dreamed they'd be in double-digit lead or have one against Kentucky here at home. It's amazing how teams can turn around getting blown out. What about Wake Forest getting blown out by Maryland and then beats Maryland convincingly. Haslam missed in close Bradley. A authoritative rebound. So much is emotion in this game and every day is a new matchup. Allison gave a little look and drew a foul and it might be Haslam and it is and that's going to be three now so he's got to watch out a little bit. Jump shot by Turner, really not one of his strong suits. Look at that great block out down here. Look at that block out. Simply means getting between your man and the basketball. I mean, we don't see that anymore in basketball. That's like a lost art. Kenyon Weeks, who did a nice job. Here's the Florida native, Desmond Allison. At the free throw line, no points in the first half for the first year guard. He was heavily recruited as a football player. Was he ever? Hey, they say Texas really loaded up in recruiting the football. Last year, he had a stretch where he scored three touchdowns in a football game, scored 35 points in two basketball games back-to-back, -back, and then got three more touchdowns on the following Saturday in a football game. Oh, did he earn his scholarship then? <laughs> wow. So. Massachusetts struggling big time this year. Bruce Flint down to Rhode Island. Nice look. Eddie Shannon in traffic. Got it to Miller, and he got it. What a nice look. You're right. I mean, there's Shannon in traffic, but he has the awareness and anticipates Miller really well on a win. Back to a 10-point advantage, Florida. And remember, they're playing this game in four-minute segments. That's their game plan. Nice strip by Stoll. Does Allison on the drive had it knocked away? And we haven't seen Weeks get hot yet from the three, and he can really shoot the three. Nice ball movement by the Gators, but it's all around the perimeter. But that's where they've been doing the damage tonight with a three-point shot. Showing some patience, showing some good high screens to free people. I think Weeks is due for a three. If they get a little racket, they still guarded him because he's been ineffective. He can make one happen. And a whistle and an offensive foul, I believe, on Miller as he gave the ball up but ran into his man. Picks up his second. Yeah, moving screen right there by Miller. He's going to be such a special player here. Look at John Pelfrey talking to him, the former Kentucky Wildcat. Assistant coach now, member of the Unforgettables. That his jersey retired. Yeah. As a matter of fact, hangs in the rafters at Rupp. Then he held the jerseys of all those kids. Pelfrey, Fellhouse, and Farmer. Ten-point advantage, under 17 to go in this big SEC battle. Allison faked the three, tried to get it down to Padgett. Should have shot that. He really should have shot that. Had the good open look. Also, he can't forget on that team a fair player, Jamal Mashburn. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> the Masher, the monster Mash. <laughs> Ashimo Evans to inbound, 22 on the shot clock. That one hit Jamal McGraw right in the chops and out of bounds. Really tough pass to handle. Coming up Saturday on ABC. Three of the top four teams. Some of you'll see UConn take on Stanford. Dick was talking about that. He and Brent will bring you that game. The others will see Cincinnati and DePaul. That's college basketball. Coming up on ABC this weekend. I feel like Marco Polo, the traveling man, getting the play tomorrow. Go to Palo Alto. Tell you what, you're in a stretch right now, aren't you? You're yeah. all over the place. Brent Wright's going to try three. Oh! oh, oh. 
when something like that goes in, Mr. Nestler. When something like that goes in, that could be something big brewing here. The lead is ballooned to 13. Evans cut off on the baseline. You got to make some shots, and Padgett's going to have to make some shots. Couldn't get his man in the air. Good job defensively by the Gators. Look at Dupay chasing Saul Smith on a perimeter. Saul Look almost it. lost a handle and now a foul. And it's going to be on Teddy Dupay. If Kentucky's going to get back in this game, Scott Padgett's going to have to start to make some special plays. The first three-pointer by Florida in the second half, a classic. Watch this one. I mean, are you kidding me? Off the glass, <laughs> baby. Wow. I mean, that's Chris Fowler's style. That's right. Not Brad Doherty's style. <laughs> I saw Brad shoot the rock. He was automatic. He would have liked that move by McGlore, but not the finish of it. And McGlore got it back. Leading rebounder in the first half for Kentucky was Ryan Hogan. That's amazing. They did have a big edge in rebounding, but Florida shot the ball so well, it really didn't matter. Especially shooting so well from the perimeter. Turner, that's what he does best. Yeah, he really does. He gets in traffic, has that good driving ability. Wright probably shouldn't be the guy handling that in the backcourt, but he does get it up to Stolt. And 20-second timeout taken by Billy Donovan. And he's in Teddy Dupay's ear a little bit right now. Now, when we're finished here, the hoops continues. Memphis will take on Louisville in a Conference USA matchup. Then at midnight, Iona takes on Idaho. Idaho and Iona are camper tonight of three. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of Go Network. Go.com. Jimmy Falvano used to coach on Iona. He used to always say, Iona College. <laughs> Iona College. <laughs> Oh, boy. Sellout crowd, a record crowd, 12,443. It's a new O-Dome record. We expected it, and we got it. And you think this isn't a big oh, ticket? Wow, this wow. is a hot ticket. There's the Vital family. Wow. Luckily, Terry and Sherry look like their mom, and Chris is just off screen, the son-in-law. Team Brother Davis, they don't look really enthused. i got to get on them. They look like they're very relaxed. This yeah, it's a big ticket when you have the whole Vital family in one crowd. Let's Out of bounds to Kentucky. Well, my wife had to bring me down a whole new set of clothing to now go on this trip and take back the other clothes that I have back home to Sarasota. 15, 28 left. The double-digit Florida lead. Yeah, it takes you to Philadelphia where Xavier and St. Joe's were tied in an 8-10 game final minute and a half. Xavier's Gary Lumpkin, oh, the mistake. They leave him alone for the triple. He makes him pay. They're in a timeout with a minute to go. X up by three. Chris, this is the kind of crowd you would love. 12,443, new O'Connell Center record, and they are enjoying everything they're seeing. 49 to 38. I tell you, they're all on me over here. So aren't we better than the Dukies? Aren't we better than the Cameron <laughs> Graces? Where you're like, the difference is that Cameron Indoor Stadium, it's like that every time you play. And over here, they got to start to develop they're this. Learning. Again. They're learning. They're learning. They are learning. The reptile section behind us, the rowdy reptiles. Yeah. And man, they were rowdy starting about midnight last night. They started lining up outside. There were thousands when we came over here three hours before the game. And I want to tell you, they rushed down to get these seats, and they haven't been in them much. They've been standing the whole game. I tell you, they were all so rowdy. I, rowdy reptiles, I did a signing here today. They were out in full force, and they were fired up. You had cramps in your hand when that session <laughs> was over. Two hours, nonstop. Bradley trying to work oh, against Stolt. He walked with it. Yes, sir. He walked on the interior. It's 15 I Kentucky turnover. I still really believe the guy that's got to make it happen for them is their leader, Pat. is their catalyst, Mr. Patrick. He's blank right now. Yeah. He's blank. Has not scored. 0 for 5, I believe. He goes for a steal there and he's right flying into the table. Yeah, what I like about Shannon, he has the experience and the know-how to calm them down. They have a tendency to get a little bit out of control, Florida. That's why I said when he took over that point guard spot as a starter and let Teddy Dupay, who's got it right now, come off the bench, there was a calming effect, and that seemed to help him. And he's trying to pick up a loose ball, but Saul Smith does instead. And it should be Kentucky ball on the steal, right? Yep. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to say Kentucky had possession, and then there was a tie-up, and then it would go back the other way, which is, that's part of the flaw in that rule. They've had a tough time all year interpreting that rule, and I've said so many times, and I'll say it again. 
throw the ball up and let them play. It's trying to determine now whether it's a ball. Because remember this, the new rule now is if the defense forces the tie up, the right. ball goes to the defense. But in that case, they're saying that Saul Smith had possession, then the ball was tied up by the Florida player, and thus it goes right back over to Florida, and it takes away a nice play by Saul. Right. Well, they come up with a steal anyway. Maybe poetic justice, I guess. Bradley on the break. Foul. Eddie Shannon's going to make him earn it. Not a bad foul because Bradley's not a great free throw shooter, and that would have been an automatic. He a little hesitated oh, taking this to the basket. Interesting number on Wayne Turner. I'll tell you, Brad, interesting number. He's played 137 games. He has a chance to become the all-time leader in basketball. Christian Leitner has the record at 148. He'd have to get five games into yeah. the postseason to become the new record holder. You mentioned Michael Bradley, who does have a good inside game, but his free throw shooting 48% coming into the game, although he got the roll on one earlier. Not that time. His elbow is really out to the side. He's got to get that elbow in a little bit. The school record at Kentucky, by the way, is 143. Jeremy Brickett. Brickett. Yeah. I can't fool you. You got all the numbers anyway. Here I think I'm giving something new. The guy's like automatic. He's like a computer. I more, mean, more automatic maybe than Mike's free throw shooting here. Yeah, not really pretty right there. Missed them both. And every opportunity is going to be key now because we're down to under 14 and a half minutes and it's still a double digit advantage for the game. Great job getting three-point opportunities against the perimeter defense of Kentucky. And Kentucky has not made a three yet tonight. And remember, all their losses, you check out the stats and their losses, that's been crucial to them. Teddy Dupay, downtown Gainesville, he took that shot. I was downtown Sarasota, Florida. I mean, <laughs> wow, he's down 75. Weeks knocked it out of bounds. And it'll still be Kentucky ball. Jamal McGlure will check back in. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew at the Odom O'Connell Center has never had a bigger crowd than this. They've been anticipating this game since last year when Florida beat Kentucky in Lexington. But then Kentucky returned the favor with a 35-point spanking back in early January. Padgett is still over. He's having a Valentine night. Three ring signs. Right, nice cut to the hoop. That's excellent basketball. Moving without the ball. I hope all you young kids are watching right there, baby. Give the ball up, cut without it, and many a time you'll get the open layup. You did a great job giving the ball up. Watch it right here. Freeze it. See, right here. Now he's going to make the cut down the lane. He's going to leave him there, and he's going to get a layup. There it is. Give it back. A little simple give and go. Scott Padgett tried to get position, but just wasn't set. And... Right with a chance for a three-point play. White's one of those kids. He's an unsung hero kind of player. Just solid. Plays a good game on a defensive end. He was seven for seven against Kentucky in the first matchup. The lead is the biggest of the night. And this place is jumping with joy. Do you think there'll be a little party time on this campus tonight? Wow. Nobody will be going to class tomorrow if they win wow. this game. They may not go to class anyway. Smith blocked by Stoll. And Saul got it right back. Nice job defensively. I had a bunch of kids at the signing today that couldn't understand why Dr. Horvath and a Dr. Houston and all those professors were giving exams tonight <laughs> at 8.30. They wanted to watch the game or they wanted to be here. Shame on them. Wow. I thought, why can't they give an exam at 11 o'clock? <laughs> Academics first, That's Mr. Right. Wrestler. Got to have your priorities. Academics and then athletics. But I think sometimes a professor could be a little lenient <laughs> to let the kids feel the atmosphere of the student. Dupay, nice feed to Weeks, but he didn't have much real estate to work with. Block shot and a turnover. The student environment, you want to be part of this atmosphere. These kids have fun just being in school down here. It's a great school academically. It's yeah, it State University of Florida. It really is. So here's Kentucky down 14, and we are under 13 to play. Evans also has been very quiet. When your seniors are not stepping up, it's very difficult to win on the road. Smith drives on Dupay, got him in the air, and buried the jumper. He's such an intense competitor, an excellent player coming off the bench, has given him a lot of productive minutes. As a third guard, Saul Smith, coach's son. 
Good basketball IQ. Stolt almost had it stripped out of there by Smith. Here's Weeks behind a screen. He's the one guy that hasn't found that range. And remember, he led the conference in shooting the three. Lupe missed on the feed from Stolt, and Tayshawn Prince pulls down the rebound. Prince gives him great size. On nice lob. Kamara, has he got enough room? Had it blocked. Ball comes out to Miller. Miller can really handle the ball for a big player. Backs up. Fires. I'll tell you, Michael Miller has scored them all over him. He has scored them all over him. He's a PT beer. He's going to be awesome, baby, with a capital A. Michael Miller, a diaper dandy. 13 for Miller. The lead is 15. I can feel the stands behind us. They're ready to erupt. I beg your pardon. It's a 14-point lead. They said that was a two-point shot by Miller, not a three. You feel the vibrations? It's, it's crazy. Unbelievable. In here. Trying to lob it to Kamara. Another block shot by Wright. Back-to-back -back trips. And Prince with a steal. Not a good pass right there. Evans the lead from McGlore with a little finger roll. Nice transition. Good secondary break. Come down as the trailer. Good look by Evans. That momentarily silenced the record crowd in danger. Kentucky has not been able to get a spurt. A really good spurt. An 8-1, 9-0, Get a spurt. And now with less than 11 minutes to go, they're going to need one for sure. Dupe threw it up there with the left hand. Kamara tipped it away. It'll still be Kentucky ball. And Teddy Dupe is holding his left eye. We've got a timeout. 10.53 left. The place is crazy, and they're crazy over this freshman class of the Florida Gators, led by Mike Miller. Mr. Miller, it's Miller time, Mr. Nestler. Trying to shock Kentucky. They've got 31 points from their sensational freshman, who Billy Donovan loves. I think our freshmen have come in very humble, and they've come in very, very respectful to our upperclassmen. I think our upperclassmen want to win, and they realize that our younger guys can help them win. So we've had, I think, a basketball team this year that's been very cohesive. They've got along. Our chemistry is very good. And I think part of it is, is because of the attention our freshmen got, they are giving a lot of credit to their development to the upperclassmen. Pretty healthy atmosphere, and I don't think there's any team in the country that's three top scorers are freshmen. It's amazing. I'll tell you, that's a great, great stat as you look at it right there. But, you know, I was looking at the stats of Dupe. Ready for this, Brad? 3,744 yard me right in high school right. down at Cape Coral, Florida. Played at Maryland High School. 41.9 a game. I'll tell you where there's a great bunch of freshmen that are winning as well down at UCLA. He's got outstanding Jerome Moeso, Gadzorik, Jerron Rush, Ray Young. Teddy Dupe broke the scoring record in Florida. Another pretty good player that was a guard in the ACC. There's a foul down there. Chris Corciani. Yeah, Chris Corciani was a tremendous player down in the Miami area. Jimmy Valvano used to love Corciani. Nobody had a shot to recruit Corciani versus Valvano. He brought lasagna over to the family and it was all over. <laughs> there was no foul on that. Stan corrected. There's the block shot that went out of bounds, and now timeout. timeout Take it by the Gators. Timeout. Part of maturity also, if they were to get lucky and win this game, because there's a long way to go, part of the maturity factor is what will they do coming back in 48 hours right. against a Mississippi? And that's what Mike Krzyzewski one day was telling his team. I heard him give a speech. He said, guys, I know what great teams are about. I had national championship teams in 91 and 92. You have a chance to be great, but you have to learn how to understand that you're going to be mature enough and come back to play with intensity every time. And as Billy said earlier, dealing with our success is something that we may have to look at in the future. And if they win this game, that's pretty big success, as you said, that they're going to have to deal with in the next 48 hours. See, I think the problem with that was Maryland. I don't think they could have ha they handled being way on top like they were really well. I didn't think they understood what it took to be a top five team where people come after you all the time. Leads a dozen. Florida with the ball. Eddie Shannon still trying to find somebody. Finally got him into Stolt. Approaching the midway point of the second half. A game that at every timeout has been led by the Gators. The interesting possession right now. Donovan really concerned about moving the ball. That's four touches before they shot it. Parker missed a three. And Hashimu Evans comes out of there. It's a three on two. Kentucky. He leaves it for Prince. Score it. 
Prince got that great size for a guard. Very unique to have a guy on a perimeter at about 6'7 with those long arms. I mentioned four passes if we track this right now. They average, he said, 2.2 passes in their loss against Mississippi State. There's one. Much better job of that tonight, but there it ends up almost being a turnover. Foul on who, John Crockett? Let's see. Going to be on Saul Smith. John crockett has got to be in great shape to be able to go to pace he does. <laughs> Last night, the Duke-Maryland game, and here he is tonight. And I had a Tuesday game. in Arkansas. And it's Tennessee and Arkansas and Fayetteville. Some of the other scores. For Kentucky, number 32, Desmond Allison. And for Florida, double zero, Brent Wright. Brent Wright and, and Kenyon Weeks come in, and Stolt and Parker get a breather now for Florida. Weeks doesn't look like the same player I saw earlier in terms of his career last year. Really doesn't seem to be shooting with the same confidence. Nice steal by Hashimu Evans. She was such an after. I think he'd be a great defensive back. No kidding. All the way around and sets a pick for Turner from 15. McGlore keeps it alive. Catch it on the sideline. Bobby Smith coaching like crazy over there, trying to get his team back in this game. Allison's going to go up for a three. Rebound, Haslam all alone. That would have been a big possession because he would have got it under double figures for the first time in a long time. Florida led by nine at halftime. They immediately went up by 11, and they have not looked back. I could have some, some touches inside down to that low block. There it is. There it is. Take it inside to the big guy. Good move and a foul on McGlure. He really worked so hard to get free inside. I think you're 100% right when you say there's similarity as a young player with Elton Brand. Look at him right inside. I mean, Elton Brand last year as a diaper dandy, he posted very similar. He had a good game against Duke, too. We did that when he only played 18 minutes. He had 19 points against Elton Brand, and he had the same amount of rebounds. They had very similar games in that matchup. William Avery had a great game that night. Did he knock down eight threes? Yes. He ripped everything. What a sensational point guard he has become at Duke. Ten-point lead. We're under nine minutes. Crowd just taking a little 20-second time out of their own, waiting to explode again. That's because of the patience right now offensively. I think this is very smart. Reduce the clock a little bit. One too many dribbles. Another turnover. Evans all the way. Right hand. He put it up there too hard. Put a struggle all night for Kentucky to get a spurt. <laughs> and they changed the call. They originally set Kentucky ball out of bounds. Now we're going to get it back to Florida. Kentucky just can't get one of those spurts all night long. Like you said, they're missing the outside shot. And that really hurts because that shot gives you such a lift psychologically. They're going to bring Padgett in. they got to have him on the floor now in the last eight minutes, and he's got to really try to step it up. Here's Haslam against Bradley. Down low. Good move on the baseline. Didn't get the jumper. Kentucky looking for some offense. Maybe Hogan could provide a spark. He just checked in. Who's going to shoot the three? Nice move by Bradley. That's an excellent move inside. Good post move. A little better than his dad's move when he played at Fairfield in my scouting report. I mean, his dad was a good player, but nothing like his son. Well, it's out of double digits now, Dick. Down to eight. And a foul. Weeks goes up. He's hammered. Hashimu Evans helps him up. Good sportsmanship right there by Hashimu. Big possession by Florida right here, trying to match Kentucky. As there's the good look inside, and here's the contact. And now he's got to go to the free throw line and convert these to get it back to 10. Looked like it was going to be an easy layup, but that's a good defensive effort right there by Evans. Canyon Weeks stands at the free throw line. He started the last seven games after missing those first seven of the season. Wow. Was such a shooter last year. Led the ACC, the SEC in shooting the three. Better than 50% was fifth in the nation shooting the three. I believe he's affected by that nine-game suspension earlier this year. 
Got his first point of the ball game from the line. Got a both. Got that nice touch, though. You can see it's there, that nice technique. The Gators put it back to double figures at 10. 7.46 left. Has Kentucky got enough steam, or can the Gators close the door on the defending national champs? We'll find out. When you need a... We're turning into a good ACC battle at Little John. Carolina with Ed Cota coming off the bench with an injured calf. He has three points. You see Max Owens the miss. Solomon ahead to Jamison. Plenty of time left, but right now it's the Tigers by seven, Brad. All right, Chris, that'd be huge for Clemson at home if they can pull off that one. And Florida trying to do the same in SEC action. They lead by ten. Clemson really been a major disappointment this year along with South Carolina. We've said that in... I mean, the records indicate that. Mm -hmm. They need a big win badly down there. Well, in the biggest game that this city's seen in basketball in a long time, they've gotten their money's worth tonight. The team has led pretty much throughout this thing and lead by 10 with 7.35 to play. I'll tell you, Kentucky's so special, though. They bring out the best in everybody. Everybody gets so pumped up when they see their uniform, just like Notre Dame in football. Yeah. Prince on the drive against Miller who blocked the shot. He got a second try. Loose ball. Miller trying to rip it out of there. I've seen Patrick struggle in the past, but never like tonight. You can see a lot of frustration on his face. I think where he's got to go, and he has not gone tonight, is to the low post. Yeah. He is so effective down inside. I would slide inside. Look at the score. Wow. They've almost got as many points as they had in the entire January 2nd game in Lexington. That's why scores really don't mean anything. Nope. The same with Wake Forest and Maryland. Throw those scores out. I mean, you get fans talking all the time. Some Kentucky fans said to me, yeah, we beat them by 35 today when I met some people outside. Turner and DuPay get tangled up in a foul on Wayne Turner. Hey, and one Kentucky fan said to me, they're all pumped up in there, Dickie V, but let me tell you, about five minutes in the game, they'll be silent. They have not, not been so. silent all night. Foul on Turner was his second. Evans matched up with Miller. Nice matchup here between these two outstanding forwards. Here's the freshman against the senior. And that senior's been around. He's been the three final games in a final four. Wayne Turner. Haslam feeds Stolt. Got it. That's the experience that Billy Donovan was talking about. That these guys who are experienced players, Shannon and Stolt, have really accepted their roles. Stolt's first two-point field goal of the game. He's got 11. The lead is 12. And Brad, Kentucky is still blank from the three-point line. That's amazing. They are Evans blank. is going to try one. Got and there it. it is. He must have hurt us. Nope. Only a deuce. Say his foot was on the line. Yeah, only a deuce. He made so many big shots last year in the Final Four against Stanford in an overtime thriller. And we game against Utah, bringing him back. Here's still three more. Not this time. Padgett, it's a four-on-one with the smallest guy in the court back. Turner, got it. A lot of time yet in this game, a lot of time. Florida's young kids are going to have to learn how to manage the clock now. This gets to winning time. I'd put Eddie Shannon back in at guard if I was Florida. Aslan goes in and drew a foul. I put the ball in his hands, too, down inside. Usually something good happens. Bradley picks up the foul. That's his second. Hubby Smith does an amazing job on the sideline that he never allows the kids to back away and quit. George Felton and Tubby working on that short board today when I was in that locker room. So prepared. There's a look at his son, Saul. That bench is concerned. They know, they know they're in a battle. Udonis Haslam has only missed one free throw tonight in his eight attempts. And the stakes are so different for a school like Kentucky and a two. Their stakes are to cut the bets down and win the title. But right. Florida, it's excitement if they get in the big dance. Also for the Gators, number three. Here's Eddie Shannon coming in for Teddy Dupay. And for Kentucky, Talk about recruits. They got some blue chip dynamite recruits coming to bluegrass territory next year. Both these schools have already signed a lot of talent. Good Bogans coming in, supposed to be super, according to everybody, all the experts, the Bob Gibbons of the world, great players, Keith Bogans. 14 for Udonis Haslam, and we've got six minutes left, a nine-point Gator lead. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew, and a sold-out crowd, a record crowd, at the Odom, the O'Connell Center, Gainesville, Florida. Padgett right now reverses, shoot the three. Turner gave it back to Padgett. 
He drops it to Evans, and he got it. He made a great look right there by Padgett. Down to seven, Dick. Yep, Dick made the good play. This is the first little spurt they've shown all night. Wildcats proving their medal and fighting back in. Here's Stoltz for three. Parker, big rebound. And Eddie Shannon's going to slow it down. She used some of the clock. She managed that clock. Hassel had it stripped away by Turner from behind. Kentucky, that last trip down, the extra pass paid off for him as Evans finally got it on the baseline. But here's what led to that bucket. Now watch Padgett with the great look right here. What a tremendous look by Padgett. One of the best big men passing the basketball in the nation. Kentucky's other big man has come back in. Jamal McGlure comes in. Wayne Turner goes out. Patrick gives you like an extra guard on the floor. You have a big guy that you can invert on a perimeter who can really have good looks because of his passing skill. Weeks way out near midcourt. Allison knocked it away from him. And then bumped him. Silly foul. You're 70 feet from the basket. You don't want to foul in that situation. Especially a kid like Weeks who can shoot free throws. Aggressive is okay, but you're you're right. This is just one you don't need. Yeah, well, soon as you reach the hand, and I watch this, he's going to go after the ball, and now he's going to reach. As soon as you put that hand across like that, the whistle's being blown. And so Kenyon Weeks will go to the free throw line where he has his only points of the night. Stoltz done a nice job. He gets a breather and Wright comes back in for Florida. So Florida's got Parker and Weeks, Haslam, Wright, and Shannon out there. And it's Kenyon Weeks, the 6'4 junior at the free throw line. Well, he came in his game shooting 90% on the free throw line. Struggling from the three this year, really shooting in the 20 percentile versus last year's 50 percentile. It's going to get down now for Florida to win this game, make free throws, and control the basketball. If they don't, Kentucky will come back and win this game. It's the free throw. Leaves the door open a little bit. Kentucky down seven, trying to cut it to five. Not that trip. Shannon's got to take charge here and utilize his experience on the perimeter. He's been around. He's played in a lot of big games. That's where he just waved everybody off. So let's calm down here a little bit. That's what you need, leadership, especially in the guard play. I like basketball. If you want to win big, you've got to have great guard play. Collision down low. Slips down. They're going to come out there and wipe up the floor a little bit. He has been battling down in that low block where those kids are <laughs> kind of working things up. I'm a little jealous of you that you're going to go down and see Auburn. I haven't seen him in person, and I mean, that place will be rocking. And the bottom line, you talk about guard play. Doc Robinson and Scott Pullman give them solid guard play. Billy Donovan said to me today, he said, they are a monster on a glass. They're inside people rebound like you can't believe. And when they lost Porter for those three games on the suspension by Cliff Ellis, they just got better because yeah. everybody else had to pick it up. Now he's back, and they're that much stronger. And Mac McDadney stepped up. Big average 14 a game, a freshman. He didn't lose his job either, and I salute Cliff Ellis for that. Oh, oh Miller, what a jumper that was with six on the shot clock. He buries it. He's got such a nice touch and good range for a big player. What flexibility you can have in your offense with a guy like Miller. Padgett wanted to take that three, but Shannon did a nice job to get out on it. They're zoning for the first time. They're zoning. Evans trying to pack it into McGlure. Good hustle by the Gator defense. And still time for Kentucky to get a good look. Block shot by Weeks. Kenyon Weeks with the big play and the rejection right there on Saul Smith. Now we get to winning time, the last four minutes. They've led every four-minute segment that their coach was telling them to play by. Four-minute increments. Miller for three. Oh, oh, oh! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It went in and he got fouled. Look at him jumping with joy. Chance for a four-point play from Mike Miller. Oh, is that a killer? Does that become a lethal weapon? Wow! He knocks the three and he gets fouled, Mr. Nestle. Take a look at his diaper dandy. What a cheerleader Teddy DuPay because he gets more air time than a guy that made the three. Miller was doing a little South Dakota jig over here yeah. in front of us, too. He had a dance going, and now he can add to what he just did to Kentucky if he can cap off the four-point play. 18 points for this sensational freshman. And he's backing up his performance in the last game when it was 15 and 12 for one of his better performances. 
Oh, Miller, Miller, Miller. Is it Miller's time today in Gainesville? 3.45 to go. Take a look here, Brad. There it is. Oh, they're getting ready to rock and roll here. Look at Dubay celebrating. They're dancing in Gainesville, 65 to 52. Coming up next, wait, don't do it. On a four-game losing streak, Louisville looks to stop its free fall. The Cardinals, Denny Crum and Marcus Maven are getting up to host conference foe, the Memphis Tigers, and Jermaine Owsley, that's next. Well, Chris, talking about falling, Kentucky may fall in the SEC for the first time in their last 15 games, courtesy of a freshman bunch of upstarts in Florida, <laughs> Mike Miller, that's after he hit the three-pointer. He went on to make it a four-point play. He's got 19 points for the game, and the story of this one is the three-point shooting, really, by both teams, and the fact Scott Padgett hasn't scored at all. Wow. And they haven't made a three all night long. I mean, you got one club knocking down threes. You're not knocking any down. Pretty tough to win. Quite a difference between tonight and January 2nd. And I talked to Eddie Shannon before the game. And he said, we weren't focused enough. We didn't know what it took then. I think the focus is on tonight. And now the focus is on Kentucky, whether or not they can put one more run together. Maybe at that time they were concerned with the football team playing in the bowl game. <laughs> That's right. That wipeout was the day before the Orange Bowl, as a matter of fact. Evans for three. He knew that wasn't going in. Tried to follow his shot, but Eddie Shannon picks up the rebound. Three and a half to go. But they're going to start to shoot the three a lot now, Kentucky. Really trying to calm it down and slow it down a little bit. Yeah, take time off the clock. You got to manage the clock. You got to learn that. It's part of the maturity process and learning how to win. Shimu Evans trying to make something happen and comes up with a foul trying to steal the ball from Miller. A game, more, uh, a game like this, Brad, can be so big psychologically to a program and give it such a lift. I can guarantee you tomorrow, Billy Donovan will be on the phone talking to recruits all over America, talking about, did you see us beat Kentucky? Did you see us beat Kentucky? He said, wait a minute, we didn't win this yet. There's three minutes on the clock. Florida has not lost a game here since the NIT matchup to Georgetown last March. So basically, you can say they haven't lost a game at home in 10 months. Wow. But it's hard to believe when you watch Georgetown that you don't see John Thompson on that sideline. Yeah. And he did such an amazing job, more than just coaching. The way he really fought for issues, fought for opportunities for young people. Gonna miss the big fella. The last time. Florida got a win against Kentucky here in Florida was five years ago. Well, had that big win, as you said earlier, last year over at Kentucky with Jason Williams put a one-man show on. They're back to the biggest lead or matching it, 14. Pretty good idea going to the zone if you match up. Padgett missed again. He's still trying. He's got to keep trying. He's got to be one of his toughest nights in his career. Good feed by Saul Smith. A little wraparound, no look to Bradley. Yeah, great vision. Made that play happen. Created that Saul Smith. I'll tell you one thing about Saul Smith. Anybody gets on that kid, his effort he gives is something else. His enthusiasm, his effort. Right now he's trying to stay with Eddie Shannon, who slows things down again as we approach two and a half minutes. 66 to 54. You want to spread the floor so they can't give help. You want to be at least 15 to 17 feet apart from each other. Oh, they're starting to chant an overrated thing. Oh, you don't want to feed it inside. Weeks got a shot off just before the shot clock expired. I don't think there's any denying of tonight, Mr. Nestle. I don't think so either. I don't think there's any denying of Tonight belongs to Gainesville. Oh, the parties will be going on tonight. Eddie Shannon pulls it off the weak side. He'll slow it again. Yes, We're sir. under two minutes, and the 12,443 in this record crowd 
has loved and savored every moment of this one. What a makeup. Losing by 35, coming back and winning from wire to wire. Wayne Turner runs it down and scores. Not over yet. Timeout Kentucky as they cut it to 12 with 144 left. What's really impressive is that they've been winning from wire to wire. A minute and 44 seconds. That's what Kentucky's got left. Sixty-eight to fifty-six, Florida trying to upset Kentucky, and at every timeout, they have had the lead, with the exception of six-six on our first TV timeout. Was tied the first four minutes of the game. They've led every other break. I tell you, they not only did a good job shooting the three, they did an amazing job defending the three. Well, Kentucky's been scoring threes since the rule was instituted really they've gone 357 consecutive games with at least one three tonight they're over over 14 tough to win Brad. Brent White's going to go to the free throw line I'll tell you one thing about the Kentucky kids they'll regroup and they will come back and they'll make people pay for a performance like this they're just too talented and too well coached and they got loyal fans who'll be there at Rupp Arena cheering them on don't forget Memphis and Louisville. Well, we're coming up next. That'll be a good one in Conference USA. So stick around for that. You know who's going to have to pay for this? Alabama and then South oh, Carolina. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Alabama and then South Get ready. Carolina. Get ready, my friends. Time running out. Kentucky's got to hurry up to get the shots away. Paget. Still missing. Not getting that good rotation. It just doesn't have that good look that he normally has. Saul Smith, he's going to take a three. They're 0 for 16 outside the arc. They're going to try another one right here. Here it goes. And he got Finally it. Finally gets one. One for 17. And so the streak continues, but the winning streak's not going to, it doesn't appear. It's an 11-point game with 102 left. And as you mentioned several times, that winning streak you're talking about, 15 in a row on a road. Haven't lost on the road this year in the SEC, obviously, as part of that streak, 4-0, but it's about to become 4-1, it appears. Don't forget, coming up on the Deuce this Saturday, we've got a day-night twin bill for you at 1 o'clock. Georgia Tech hosts Duke, fresh from their huge victory over Maryland. That game is subject to blackout, by the way. Then at midnight Eastern, terrific rivalry, Utah will take on BYU. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of Go. Dot network go.com well there brad you and i sat a court side for their both losses on a road the south carolina game two years ago to this day right. was their last loss of the sec in terms of on the road right on the road they did lose to tennessee in lexington we saw that one, one, well. one minute left tennessee's been a little disappointment based on the projections earlier this year they had a horrible time trying to shoot the ball the other night against Arkansas. And Smith so, picks up his fourth foul. Played so hard in beating Kentucky. Really got on a glass big time this night. You know, speaking of standings and stuff, now this gets kind of interesting. This yeah. is going to be eight and two against seven and three when all is said and done. Florida already has more victories than they had, as many victories, I should say, in conference plays they did all of last year, and they're about to. Add to that mark here with 57 seconds left. And they're doing it in front of the commissioners in the house, Roy Kramer. He does an excellent job as an administrator here watching the action. I'll tell you one thing, if they're worried about getting the NCAA tournament in Florida, forget I about think it. forget about it. 16 to 4. Come on now. Come on now. Beating Kentucky. Eddie Shannon got both free throws. Under a minute. Smile of Co-captain Greg Stoltz says it all. Saul Smith will try another. Just inside the three-point line, he hits the jumper. Good look there by Saul. Tonight belongs to Donovan. Tonight is basketball night here. This is hoops hysteria. You know, we said it from the opening lineups tonight. They turned the lights off. The music came up. You could feel the electricity. And both teams were dancing out of their huddles on the starting lineups. And that electricity has not gone away for the Gator fans. They lead by 11 with 48 to play. Just underway at Freedom Hall, Louisville's lost its last four games to Memphis. The Cardinals had a two-zip lead. That three-pointer puts Memphis in front. We'll get you right back out there when we're done in Gainesville. Brad, Dick. All right, Chris, thanks. So 
as that sign will tell you, as Chris just told you, that's what's coming up next. You got a taste from the opening tip and the first basket of that one. Here, the three-point shooting of the Florida Gators, especially in the first half, gave them their nine-point halftime lead, and they haven't looked back in the second half either. Made that extra pass, stepped up big, Stonewall off the bench. Miller's had a big night. Nine three-pointers, and on the other side, wow, not going well for Kentucky. Look at them in the four losses combined. Four for 40, tonight 0 for 9, the big seniors. Full court pressure coming from the Cats, and whoops. That was a good tackle. <laughs> Pretty good defensive player yeah. in football, and he just took Eddie Shannon down. I'll tell you right there how Mummy will sign them up. They can use a little defense. I'll, I'll tell you, Brad, if I were coaching today, you've got to recruit kids that can shoot the basketball. Shooting the three is really important. If you don't have that part of your mix on a regular basis where you can be really consistent from that, it's tough to survive. I still think that's a problem with Kentucky. Last year they had Jeff Shepard and they had Cameron Mills off the bench who started hitting big threes. And when Scott Padgett's not hitting threes, seems like nobody else does either. Yeah, because it becomes contagious when one guy's not knocking it down. Just like last night, Shane Battier was unbelievable. Yeah. Had 27, played brilliantly, made threes. William Avery's capable of doing it. Langdon. That just kills your morale when guys are knocking that sucker down and there's nothing more deflating than a guy gets an offensive rebound, kicks it out, and a guy nails it through. That's right. Second free throw off the mark. Well, it's a 12-point lead. And a foul on Weeks. They don't even want Kentucky to be able to launch a three. They're going to send him to the line, especially if you can send Wayne Turner, who will always improve his free throw shooting. It sometimes can be an adventure, but they're not in the over the limit fouls yet, so they got some to give. Yeah, not in the bonus. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't want Kentucky on my side of the draw. And if they're a number two seed in the South, then we play basically a chance to go to Tennessee where I have all their fans cheer from down there in Knoxville was the regional final. I wouldn't want to have to play them. They're a great tournament team. Brent Wright picks up the foul. Scott Padgett is still looking for his first point. And apparently he's going to get a chance from the free throw line to get it. All you can do in terms of that three-point shot is just work on shooting, work on technique, and just keep working and working on it. But Scott Padgett's first point comes with 32 seconds left in the ball game. Had you been able to tell Billy Donovan in Florida that before the game, they said, yeah, we'll take that. You've got to believe that. Well, they got people trying to protect us behind us, so those people erupt out of these stands, so I, I think we're in pretty good shape. I can tell you the reptile group is going on the floor yeah. when this one's over. The rowdy reptiles, they got to know behind us a little security, so we're in pretty good shape, Mr. Nestle, but they want to erupt here tonight. The rowdy reptiles. The rowdy reptiles are making a lot of noise tonight. Look at them. There's no studying going on there. Look at the rowdies. They came loaded for Wildcat tonight, and they're not going to be disappointed that they were standing outside at midnight last night to get in line to get in this game. They got that gator flapping up and down. They had a big win earlier this year over Florida State. Steve Robinson's done a great job regrouping that basketball team. But this is going to be of a bug, a much uh, larger magnitude. Oh, wow, no doubt about it. Anytime you beat Kentucky, I don't even care if they're down. You beat that name, Kentucky. You beat lots of years of tradition. Eddie Shannon missed a couple of free throws. And Patrick wow. finally got a three. He finally gets one to go down. He says, where have you been all night? That basket's been like a teacup to him all night long. As you see Tubby Smith wiping his head, thinking, how do I get seven points in 21 and a half seconds? We'll see if he has any answers for that when we come back. Freedom All, a Memphis team that's really turned things around. They've won four out of five against the Cardinals team that slipped into a mental funk and trying to get out of it. We'll get you right out there very shortly. Now back to Brad and Dick in Gainesville. Thanks, Chris. 73-66, the final 21 and a half seconds. As Florida looking to run its home winning streak to 12 games. Right now, it's the fourth longest winning streak in Florida history. And they've met some other top 10 teams this year, but this is the first one they've gotten on their version of the swamp, and it looks like they're going to survive it. And Ryan Hogan picks up the foul. 
I really like the whole facility here. You and I were talking about it early. I mean, the environment, the players really can feel the electricity from the crowd, and they're trying to build that home court situation. I'll tell you one thing, too, it blows my mind. You know, I get all these notes from all these SIDs. What a job they do. I say it often. It just amazes me the information they provide us. People like Brooks Downey from Kentucky and Stephen McLean and John Humanek does a phenomenal job as the head guy down here in Florida. We were kidding those guys because you and I have been all over the map, and sometimes we get a wake-up call, and we don't even know what hotel we're in, and then these guys find us and send us information. I was getting ready to do the opening last night with Mike Patrick, and I get tapped on the shoulder, and there's a Federal Express package waiting that was shipped to Mike Craig of Duke to give to me from uh, Florida. You saw Brooks there. And you know it's amazing. Kind of a long face right now. And he sent one also to the hotel, Steve McLean. This guy does a heck of a job. These guys put in some long hours and provide us with uh, a lot of the information we pass along and a lot of the help that we need to do these ball games. And those are two of the best right there, I'll tell you that much. Stolt got both free throws. Florida Gators timeout. Just a great night for Florida basketball tonight. Just an unbelievable night. The enthusiasm, the performance, the game plan, the execution. Just less than 20 remaining. Out ever at the Odom O'Connell Center. They have enjoyed it from the opening tick. The crowd total attendance went over 2 million in this facility tonight. And boy, did they get to do it in style, huh? Yeah, they really did. These people really responded. A big time crowd, as you said. I wonder what that 2 millionth fan got. <laughs> Probably one of those orange masks to wear there in the first row. Wayne Turner trying to pick up a three-point play and might have an opportunity to. Foul is on Stolt. But Billy Donovan, I'll tell you one thing, he's going to feel like a million dollars tonight as you look at the age versus the youth here. Youth being served pretty well tonight, huh? Oh, yeah, these diaper dandies have stepped up. You know, you look at diaper dandies across America. I was just thinking here, Arizona starts three, along with Terry and Bramlett. You look at UCLA starts a bunch of them, and they win. Down at the pool right now, they have to learn how to win those talented freshmen. But off also, what blows my mind is today gets the ball. Think about those Michigan kids, what they did right. a bad five to go to the final game as freshmen. They're trying to catch Teddy Dupay, and they can't. And they can't catch him. Oh, the yes, here it is. Here it is. Celebration time. Look at Teddy Dupay. He's getting kisses from the fans. Oh, my God. Look at him. He's jumping in the crowd. Final score. Oh. 75 68. That's going to do it for Dick Vitale and oh. the crew. They want to come over us tonight. Brad, they want to come over us. Presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Let's get to Louisville. Bob Carpenter and Bill Raftery. Guys.